Hey everyone, welcome to, uh, what am I calling this? Home time happy hour. This could be the first or the last, I'm not really sure, but we're talking about how you buy a home in a seller's market. Hey, as you may know, I'm Stephen Davy Davis, your land specialist and residential realtor here in Central Kentucky, who you may not know is a wonderful colleague and friend of mine named Violet Robinson. Hi, I'm Violet Robinson. I'm a resident of Jessamine County and I work predominantly in Fayette County, Jessamine County because I, those are where I live. So yeah. what are we calling this? Happy hour? Home, home time happy hour. Home time happy hour. Yeah, so. I just, um, she and I had a discussion uh, last week and you know, a lot of you, if you're watching this and you're buying a home or at least looking to, you probably know how difficult it is. And we had a very long discussion. I was headed to show some land somewhere and kind of venting just about my frustration and, and how difficult it is for everyone right now. And I thought we ought to explore this a little bit more. Um, talk about expectations when you're going into try to buy a house. Talk about why things the way they are and maybe not give you definitive answers, but certainly give you some informed opinions as we are professionals. Uh, and we, we take a lot of pride in you know our research of the market and uh, the daily things that we see on the market. And so this is really just all about It's yeah. a historic time period. Historic. It is not. Repeat con- that. It's, yeah. it's historic. Absolutely. Like, we're not blowing that, like, every stat. <laughs> yeah. Like, this time is blowing, like, every real estate stat. In the history since the- they've been recording it, as yeah. far back as I can go. And yeah. so, one of the stats that I think is particularly interesting, um, and I keep hearing a lot, and you and I, you know, need to discuss this probably a little bit more, too, and but everyone always wants to compare it to what happened in 2007. Uh, right. And it's not. It's it's really not that. Um, COVID is obviously the elephant in the room, in the global room. Everyone knows that COVID happened, regardless of your thoughts on anything, like it affected everybody. And um, there were lots of like policies made and bills passed and things. Um, but at the end of the day, the circumstances of the housing market right now, while COVID was uh, a variable in that, we're not in the same environment as we were preceding the housing market crash that everyone very sadly and probably still angrily remembers. Like that was that was predatory lending. That was you know overvaluing houses when they weren't worth as much as they were actually worth. That was giving people money that they shouldn't have gotten. Um, it was a lot and overextension of... is as a huge term that I keep going back to. So if we go back and compare even the interest rates that were taking place mm. during that time yeah. are not the same as they are today. Right. I mean, so again, historic, historic, historic. And, right. and we look at where things are. If you look at interest rates, I, I keep going back to that one just because, you know, if, a few months ago, they were down in the twos. Yeah, they're buff, they're back up into the threes, threes again. Yeah. You know, that's still incredibly. I mean, it's if you go back to the eighties. Yeah, when they were, were they 17%? seventeen percent. <laughs> people were buying houses on a seventeen percent interest rate. Now, granted, on the flip side of that, the home value was not two hundred thousand. Right. That's not what you were looking at. Right. You were looking at something that was probably 80,000 right and but you were paying 17 percent interest on right it. that's like a so, credit card exactly being, yeah it's, that's it, it's, wild so when you look at it from that standpoint and you say that you know interest rates oh well I'm gonna wait for the interest rates to go back down but it's not gonna happen more than I mean not next it's, year it's, yeah. not, I mean the I was just speaking with a gentleman today um, and he was telling me he's super into economics and into history um, and I'm going to forget the either the Fed's name or the uh, appointed. But like we're looking at like probably through 2023 of these record lows right. of interest rates. On top of that, I made a video not long ago about um, this was from an economist mouth, not from mine. I mean, I had a reaction to it, but uh, it was just talking about how, you know, a lot of people, they they froze their um mortgage payment basically like where there was no punishment for not paying your mortgage kind of thing Uh, but by and large most of the people that have that were in that program 
opted out way before we had vaccines on our lips and like all that kind of stuff. And so the amount of people that, you know, are looking at defaulting on their home or something like that, um, while sad, it, it is an inevitability. That's that's happening even when the market's great. Right. Um, it's just it's not, not going to be drastic. Yeah, it's not going to be like was. this drastic, drastic thing. And oh, by the way, um, there's an influx of cash right now. And so what you are competing with for all of those defaulted homes and foreclosures is people that have cash. They don't need an interest rate. They're reaching in their pocket. They're writing a check and your 30 year mortgage does not stand a chance against somebody who's like, here's a briefcase full of cash. Figuratively, that does not happen. Yeah, like, not in this know. country. <laughs> not in this country. Like that's not how that works. But you know, your loan versus their cash, like they're gonna win every time. It's like handgun versus bazooka. Like which one's doing more damage? Like right. the answer is obvious. So I mean, so again, historic. 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 And the lack of inventory. Yeah, it's, so lack of inventory, huge. Um, you know, 2008, 2009, everyone's building everywhere. Booming, right? Construction everywhere. Uh, why aren't there more houses on the market? And locally, one of the things that I can say with certainty is, if you sell your home, where are you going to go? Once you are a seller, and you have sold, then you become a buyer. Unless you're moving off to like London or you're gonna rent or whatever, but if you're intending on buying a home that isn't like at some outrageous like price point where there aren't as many people trying to buy homes, then where do you go? So that's one of the big reasons why a lot of people aren't selling right now. Cause it's like, do I love the, the house that I live in or at least like tolerate the house that I live in? Or do I sell it? maybe get a lot of money, but then, you know, what do I do with my kids? What do I do with my dog? How do I live my day to day life? And so a lot of people are saying, yeah, I'm not going to sell because my options are incredibly limited right now. It's a supply demand thing. It is a, it's an interest rate thing, an economy thing. It's a, it's a lot of variables creating what we're doing right? Um, or, or what we're experiencing. I mean, so again, historic, historic, historic. Thing. What should buyers know in order to make their process as smooth as possible? It doesn't mean that the road is not bumpy, but like, so that the car does not come off the chassis and, <laughs> you know, like, so, so try that it's not to so, eliminate roadblocks. Yeah, it, it, yeah because there will be roadblocks. Oh. Like that's, the, that's the number one caution. You're not going to eliminate all roadblocks. Hey, so thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts, your questions, tag someone, or leave a comment below.